Every time I turn around, I'm mentoring a student who came from a well-known animation school and they end up sharing that they don't know how to use this essential tool for Maya that every animator should know. Animation tools that would get them animating twice as fast as they ever have. Animation tools that would keep them from ripping their hair out with common problems. And no, you don't need an Animbot subscription for any of this, they're all free. These are the bare bone animation tools that really every, every animator should have and that will carry them to the finish line very effectively. Even if you've heard of some of these tools before, it wouldn't be surprising to me if you were using them incorrectly. It's, it's very easy to do with the um, lack of tutorial know-how on that. Number one, Toy Machine. Toy Machine massively speeds up your animating, especially in blocking and blocking plus with stepped curves. Let's say you set all your key poses, then it's time for a first pass on all the breakdowns. You select your rig controls that you wanna move, you go to say halfway between those two key poses on the timeline and use the tween machine to push the pose 50%. It quickly sets the pose somewhere in the middle between both. Then you might grab the hip and say, you know, let's favor that hip closer to that keyframe on the other side, the, the keyframe that came before, so it slows down the TY. And then you add another body part or set of controls that just favor one way or the other. Uh, for your breakdown. Now this is all in the same breakdown key and that's far faster than you trying to pose each control by hand Especially in stepped as nothing is moving automatically. You're not getting that that splined effect for the auto in-betweens And it gets the pose 60 to 70 percent of the way there and you can tweak as you need Now think of all the time that you've saved If you do this with every breakdown in your shot and then all the time saved with every ease in, ease out, even your in-betweens. This is a massive workflow upgrade. A lot of animators get Tween Machine and they have no idea how to use it, but now you do. Thankfully, there's more than one free Tween Machine out there as well. So check the description to get it and start right away. Number two, Art Trackers. You probably already know this one. It's an animator's bread and butter for sure but many animators are still using it wrong or not enough. We should find out if, if that's the case for you. Art trackers let you grab a controller and see a visual curve to track the arc. Shocking. But you also can visually see your timing and spacing, and this is especially helpful for more novice animators uh, to start seeing their arcs, the timing and spacing more clearly. You'll notice things you completely missed with just your eyes because you're still getting used to your eyes seeing animation as clearly as a veteran would. This is why you should be tracking everything. Tracking the cog, head, wrists, heels, props, etc. On that note, don't make the beginner's mistake of tracking the wrong point. I see animators all the time, for instance, tracking a foot controller and perfecting the arc on that foot. What they didn't realize is that the pivot point wasn't on the heel. And when you're showing the animation to an audience, we don't see the controllers, we see the geometry of the character. The heel geometry is the arc that you want to track because the controllers that we're animating usually move differently around it as it goes. How are you supposed to track it then? You can pair constrain a locator with offset to the point that you want to track and then track that locator. Boom. Now you can track all the arcs that you want to see. Do you know what's also a mistake with arc trackers? Using Maya's built-in arc tracker. Students default to this um, just because it's there without knowing its downfalls. Like not updating when you move something so that you can see the updated visual adjustment. More importantly, if you don't remember to go and delete Maya's arc tracker in the outliner, it bogs your scene down to a crawl because it just keeps adding more and they're really cumbersome for some reason. Just killing your animation playback. No bueno. Thankfully, there are so many free, better art trackers out there that there's no need for Mayas. I'll link to some below. If you live in paranoia that at any moment Gimbal Lock will spring into existence, here's Johnny, and be a never-ending nightmare on your animation, Rotation Order is the hero to save you from that darkness. Like Sylvester Stallone and Cobra, 
gimbal lock is the disease, and rotation order is the cure. The disease, and I'm the cure. With every controller you rotate, one axis is prone to gimbal if it's rotated too much, making it very difficult to get smooth motion or just have double rotations on something that shouldn't. Maya has a default way to prioritize what rotation is important, so it's usually set up to something like X, Y, Z. You might think the priority then is one, two, three, but actually X is number one, Z is number two, and Y is number three. Y in this case, having the least priority and the most likely to gimbal. If you really need to use rotate Y for your animation, then it's likely gonna need to change if you don't wanna have gimbal lock problems. So simple, you just change the order, right? It's no longer X, Y, Z, right? Well, if you change the order from X, Y, Z to anything else in Maya's default attribute editor, the order will change, uh, but it will also wreck your entire animation up until this point. So you'd have to redo all your keyframes, adjusting that pose for each thing and hope that you can remember everything as well. The convert rotate order tool gets around that. It keeps your animation for that controller in place while swapping the rotation order on the fly as you go through your animation. So you can just laugh at gimbal lock forever. It even recommends what rotation order will probably be best for you so you don't have to really think about it too much. You don't have to do the math and be like X, Y, Z, Z, Y, X, right? Morgan Loomis, the creator of this tool, has saved countless hours of my life with it and kept me from going bald. Number four, Studio Library. If you really want to speed up your animation time and make it much easier to have a blast, get Studio Library. It's going to save your poses. It's going to mirror them. It's going to set up selection sets for you. Uh, this is especially helpful if you plan on working with the same character uh, in, in multiple shots because you can build up this library of poses and animation that you can just kind of click and drop into your scene. In fact, maybe there's sections of things that you want to save from other animations that you could probably just plop in and apply to something else. This would be a good tool for that. Amazing, huge workflow upgrade saves you a ton of time and hassle. Um, the more that you kind of invest in using Studio Library, the more it pays off. This one I think is pretty straightforward to use. Just grab it and enjoy it. Number five, FCM Hider. Getting better with animation means seeing the problems in your animation so that you can fix it, right? One of the best ways to focus your eye so that you can see problems clearly and level up is hiding things. FCM Hider lets you select a body part and then just hide it with a button. You can just turn it on and off. So let's say that you're trying to improve spine overlap. Why not hide the head and legs from view and arms and all these things so you can just see it clearly. This way you're not distracted by everything else that's going to be moving around through your shot while you scrub it or distracted by all these things that you haven't fixed yet. Hiding specific body parts on a character rig is usually tricky to do as most character rigs don't come set up with uh, layers for all the body parts already a part of that character that you can turn on and off. Or they don't come with even separated geometry for the character mesh so that you can go in this like in the outline or select the head and hide that manually. FCM Hider just makes that a breeze for you. You can get around any of those obstacles. I recommend this tool all the time to my students in Rusty Animator School and they rave about improving their shots so much easier once they have it. For funsies, number six, tap timing. We know timing and spacing are critical principles. Though I often see animators experiment far more with their spacing than they do with their timing. It's like after we set a keyframe, we just forget that that's something that we can move around on the timeline. It's either that or it's so much of a hassle to just grab all the stuff correctly and move it around that we'd rather not mess with that. Tap timing takes away a lot of the chore of adjusting your timing. It makes timing feel like something that you can just play around with because it's so much easier to do. How do you use it? Well, you select control. Uh, or select a, a series of controls like a select all in the, your selection set. You go in between the keyframe that you want to adjust. Then you hit a hotkey to add one frame 
or to remove one frame. And it automatically moves all of the keyframes out or in that come after it. Pretty cool, huh? So where do you go to get this script? Well, it's actually nothing that you can download. It's from an old website of an awesome an animator, Cameron Fielding. Um, I grabbed it from there years ago and incorporated it in my workflow and it's never left. Grab one of these Maya animation tools today and see how it helps you. Uh, then you can dive deeper. That usually is the best way to take on new habits for your animation workflow. And especially since just one of these like Tween Machine or Studio Library can make such a massive difference on its own, you'll see the upgrade immediately. On rustanimator.com, I've created links to all of the tools that I've mentioned and more. Check the description below so you can quickly grab all of them plus the extras. Happy animating.